Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. We're picking back up with New Morning Mercies. I'm just going to take it from here. It says this, I think one of the dirty secrets of the Church of Jesus Christ that many of the things that we do are done out of fear and not out of faith. Fear happens when I look at myself, assess my resources, and conclude that I do not have what it takes to do what God is calling me to do or to face what I have to face. Fear in a believer is a function of forgetfulness. To the degree that you forget who God is, who you are as his child, and what you have been given by his grace, fear is your default emotion. I am deeply persuaded that the only solution to fear is fear. Ooh. In other words, fear is only defeated by a bigger fear, a, b- a greater fear. Here's what I mean. When the fear of God overwhelms and controls your heart, it protects you from the paralyzing and debilitating fear of other things. It's only when God looms hugely larger than anything you could ever face in this fallen world that your heart is able to experience peace even when you don't understand what is happening and you don't have the power to solve it if you did. So meditate on these passages. Psalm 23 verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Proverbs 19, verse 23. The fear of the Lord leads to life, and whoever has it rests satisfied. Isaiah 41, 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Psalm 34, verse 4, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. And finally, Proverbs 28, verse 14, Blessed is the one who fears the Lord always. So how can you enter the experience of vertical fear, which is the fear of God, overwhelming and quieting horizontal fear, which is the fear of anything else? Well, first run to God and pray that he will grace you with his eyes to see and his heart to remember his awesome glory. Then require yourself to quit meditating on your problems and instead meditate on the glory of the God who has become your father and who is always with you. No, you should not deny your problems, but if you let them be the subject of your meditation, they will loom larger and larger and you will grow more and more afraid. Today, face reality, but meditate on God's glory. That's such a strong ending. Today, face reality, but meditate on on God's glory. What are you setting your mind on? What are you meditating on? Are you meditating on your problems or are you meditating on the problem solver, which is him? Which one are we giving a power to? Which one are we giving glory to? Which one are we giving control to? Is it the problems over our life or is it the Lord over our life? And I love that the author, Paul, is literally saying, hey, your problems are real. Because that's like when he opened up and said, I think one of the dirty seers of the church of Jesus Christ, that many of the things that we do are done out of fear, not faith. First off, I feel that. A lot of my decisions are out of fear and I wrestle with that. I want them to be out of faith. And that's actually something I talk a lot about people when I talk about parenting is I want my kids to make decisions out of faith, not fear. And so I'm working on that myself now so they can see it in me and live that out just normally in their life. But something else I think that happens in the Christian church is that because we are believers, we're kind of like, we kind of feel like we almost have to play Christian. We have to be like, oh, well, everything's fine. Like, I know God's good. God's good all the time and all the time God's good. And there's all these like kind of cliche things that are true, but we say them without believing in them. And maybe that's not true for you. So I don't want to speak that over your life. But if you're anything like me, sometimes my knowledge of God's love for me, my, my knowledge of God's protection of me, my knowledge of God's provision for me isn't always what I experience. And that's not to say that he's wrong. That's to say that my perception is wrong. But that doesn't mean that the pain that I'm feeling or the nervousness, the anxiousness, the fear that I'm feeling isn't less real. And so I love that he's, he's saying, no, face reality. 
Like your problems are real. If you're struggling finding sleep at night, you're struggling finding a job to pay for your bills, you're you're struggling with loneliness because you're trying to find either a community or a spouse. Like those things are very real. Let's not belittle those. But let's do what we always say. Let's magnify God. Let's meditate on him. Like go back to those scriptures and say them with authority over your life. Proclaim them over your life. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The fear of the Lord leads to life. Whoever has it rests satisfied. Don't you want rest for your soul? I know I do. And it says that the key to that is the fear of the Lord, which leads to life. And even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. So what that, what's that saying? I know you all know this, but let's, let's, let's ingrain this into our memory. Even, even though I'm walking through the valley, the shadow of death, I'm walking through the darkest of valleys and places where I naturally want to be scared in places I naturally want to have fear rise up on me. I want to make decisions out of desperation. I'm scared about my provision. I'm scared about my protection. I'm scared about my future. Even though I'm walking in those areas, I will fear no evil. I will fear nothing. I will fear nothing. Why? For you are with me. Praise God. You are with me. I love it. God is with me and he is with you. We need to work on our memories. We need to work on remembering who he is, who we are to him, and what he can do. But it's so easy to get overwhelmed by our circumstances when when we're only looking at our circumstances. We're only looking at our situation. We're only looking at our bank account. We're only looking at this and that and that, that, that. But we're not looking at him. Cast your eyes upon the hills, for where does your help come from? It comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Today, face reality, but meditate on God's glory. He is bigger than your problems, and he's bigger than my problems. Let's remember that, and let's live like that. Lord, give us eyes to see and hearts to remember who you are. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, y'all. Now's that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to the Lord. Don't forget that you are God's masterpiece. Don't forget to love you. We love you. We'll be talking to you tomorrow. Aloha. Aloha.